A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Rico. I'm Silver. It was 1876, a year memorable for the last great Indian uprising. The Sioux were on the warpath, and Custer and his command had been wiped out in Montana territory. Even so, the settlers of Colorado, which had just been admitted to the Union, prepared for an all-out celebration. They had scheduled a holiday week which would combine observance of the territory's rise to statehood with the ceremonies commemorating the centennial of the Declaration of Independence. Tonto and the Lone Ranger discussed the coming celebration as they walked their horses down to a trail crossing on the Denver and Modoc City Railroad. Tonto, the flag now has 38 stars. Ah, and me think there'll soon be plenty more. Tonto, look there. On what you see? Those marks in the sand alongside the railroad tracks. Oh, look like somebody fall off train, roll over. Do you see those zigzag footprints? Uh, him staggered off into bushes. That man is alive, he needs help. Him right ahead, you see? Yes, he's on his face. Oh, 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 oh. oh. He turn him over while you get canteen. Good. Oh, him. He's still alive, but got plenty cuts, bruises. Here, oh. drink this, mister. We're friends. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Just take it easy. We'll get you to town. A mask, man. What's the idea of you helping me? We've met before. I know it. You were the fellow who captured me after the stage hold up at Wagon Wheel Station five years ago. And you're Tom Dodge. <laughs> right. What happened? The brakeman caught me bumming a ride on a freight train. He threw me off. The brakeman was within his legal rights. The legal rights be hanged. I never did a thing like that when I was riding the Alhu Trail. That's right. You never were accused of hurting anyone. That's why you got off with a five-year sentence. I could have killed that brakeman. I've got a gun. You didn't use it? Oh, listen, mister, whether you believe it or not, I, I've learned my lesson. I want to go straight. Well, Tonto and I are going to take you to Modoc City. I have a friend there who'll put you up until you're fit to work and can find a job. Why do you want to do that after getting me jugged in the first place? You deserve what you got. Now I want you to get what you deserve. <laughs> Mr. 
Several days later, Tom Dodge knocked at the kitchen door of Modoc City's only hotel, a rambling structure of logs and stone known as the Hank House. Come in, I've got no time to be opening doors. For a moment, the ex-convict stared in voiceless awe at the powerful woman who confronted him. Sweat beaded her broad red face, and her mighty arms were white with flour. She held one of the pies for which men remembered her, even after they had forgotten her salty sayings. Stop gawking and come on in. Oh, well, thank you kindly, ma'am. If it's a handout you want, I'll fix you up. If the fellow says your belt buckle looks like it's rubbing your backbone. Well, I've had plenty to eat the last couple of days. I got thin before that, Mrs. Henry. You call me Ma Hank or just plain Ma. Only one man calls me Mrs. Henry. I reckon that's a mask man. Say, what do you know about him? Here's a note he wrote for you. Hmm. Hmm. So you're Tom Dodge, and you're trying to ride the straight, narrow trail. That's right, Ma. Then you can roost here. Your board bill can run till you get fleshed up and start working. Mark Stone, president of the Modoc City Bank, sat at a desk in his cashier's office. A lean, hard man, he wore range clothes and carried a gun, a habit which gave depositors a greater feeling of security than they would have found in the dignified dress of other bankers. At the moment, he was busy affixing his signature to each one of the crisp new banknotes, which lay before him in bundles of $1,000. Bob Finch, the cashier, stood at Stone's shoulder, a strained look on his bespectacled face. Yeah. There, Bob. I've signed the last one. Marta. I just checked the books. Who told you to do that? Nobody. I did it to protect myself. What do you mean by that? I'm no fool. I've been watching you. You've lost thousands playing poker. Suppose I have. You've been dipping into bank funds. There's a $25,000 shortage. Oh, see here, Bob. I've had a run of hard luck. I'll win it back sooner or later. Even sooner won't be soon enough, Mart. Colorado's a state now. The new banking department is out to see that the old territorial banks are sound enough to get permanent charters. What of it? The examiners are on the way here right now. A traveling man ran into them in Lansville. They're working this way. I see. That doesn't give us more than a week to cover up. What do you mean, us? How much cash have we got in hand? We're practically out of currency, except for that $15,000 issue you just signed. We have some silver money, but no gold. Would half of these banknotes interest you? Uh, not if I have to go to jail with you. I've got a scheme that'll cover the shortage and let us split this new currency. Well? Now, listen. We promised the businessman we'd stay open on the first night of the big celebration. We'll fake a holdup. Uh -huh. I'll come through the back door wearing a mask. With cowpokes shooting up the town and miners brawling in every cafe, Marshal Ames wouldn't have a ghost of a chance to catch a real bank robber, let alone me. What? I think you've got something there. Uh, after I take the money, I'll simply step out into the alley, hide it under the back steps, and then hurry around the block. When the alarm's given, I'll be in the crowd out in front. What'll we tell the marshal? We'll report $40,000 stolen. That'll cover the shortage and let us get away with 15000 I need the money. I'll string along with you. Good. Now, there's just one thing to be careful about. That's this new money. Don't let any of it get into circulation. Why not? We'd get into trouble if it became known we had a new issue just before the robbery, then started spending some of that money right after it was stolen. I may have to use my share in a hurry. Tell me the hour you'll show up. I want to have the place clear of customers and the strong box open. Eight o'clock will be the hour. I'll be ready. On the first night of the centennial celebration, Modoc City was a scene of unbridled revelry. As eight o'clock approached, the square was jammed, but bursts of yelling and shooting continued to announce the arrival of more merrymakers. Little concerned by the demonstration, Tonto shouldered his way toward the bank with a $20 gold piece which a provision dealer had been unable to change. 
The Indian found Bob Finch at the cashier's counter and presented the double eagle. Me like get change. Everybody's been wanting change. There's no gold and less than five dollars worth of silver in the place. Well, if me not get change, me not get bacon. It's almost eight, our closing time. Now, you'll have to vamoose. I'll me wait till you close. Maybe somebody bring in change. Look, you pesky redskin. Me look. Me see plenty paper money in iron box where doors open. You Indians don't like paper money. Me take it. Me no banknotes good as gold. It's eight o'clock. Come on, Indian, move. Me want change. Um, All right, all right. Here are four five-dollar bills. Now get out, front. A few seconds after Tonto left the front door of the bank, Mark Stone slipped in through an alley entrance. A neckerchief covered his face, and he held a gun. Everything set, Bob? Yes, but I had trouble getting rid of the last customer. The front door isn't locked. It won't matter if I work fast. Where's the money? Right there in the box, all tied in a bundle. Uh, But listen, Mart, about that money... I've got it all. I wanted to tell you to... Say, you're pointing that gun right at me. I sure am, you fool. I can't let you live knowing what you do. Now, wait. I won't tell. I'll juggle the books for you. This balances everything. No, don't shoot the dog. The sound of the shots reached Tonto before he could cross the crowded street. He darted back into the bank with the marshal and several citizens at his heels. All of you get back. Is Finch dead? No. There no pulse, Marshal. Him dead. Well, has anyone seen leaving the bank? I was at the mouth of the alley when I heard the shots. Right afterwards, someone ran away from the back door. Only one man? That's all. I figured a cowpoke was up to some crazy shenanigan. Yeah. The bank robber couldn't have picked a better time for a job. Aren't you going to get up a posse? No, not now. Where's Mark Stone? Right here, Marshal. Oh, Let me through, man. Right here, right here. Get out. I should have stayed here tonight. Poor Finch. Where have you been, Mark? Out on the square watching the fun. What's been taken? Just a second. The safe is empty. That means our loss may reach $40,000. Uh, of course, I'll have to check. Can any of the money be traced? Not a cent of it. The currency was all old. The serial numbers of the bills aren't on record. This was a one-man job. And I think the man's still in town. I can uh, lay hands on a very likely suspect. You don't mean that the robber's right here, do you? No. Huh? The fellow I have in mind is Tom Dodge, an ex-convict who's boarding at the Hank house. Well, that's where I stay. I've seen the critter there. Let's go get him. I can handle him alone. You stay here, Mart. Keep these men with you. I don't want word of what I'm doing to get spread around just yet. Say, Marshal, where'd that Indian go? He must have slipped out the back way. Well, he won't start any lynch talk. Lynching's too good for the fellow who killed Bob Finch. No more of that, Mart. I'll let you know as soon as I have Dodge safely locked up. Later that night, Tonto rejoined the Lone Ranger at a deserted shack just outside Modoc City. He told of the bank robbery and murder, and then reported what he had been able to learn about Marshal Ames' activities. Marshal find Tom Dodge in hotel, but him not find any gun or money. Dodge in jail now. Dodge's past record doesn't prove him guilty of this crime. Maybe that fellow Stone rob own bank. What gave you that idea, Tonto? Well, him lie about money taken from bank. Him tell Marshal all paper money plenty old. That not true. Well, how's that? Well, just before him get killed, cashier give me four bills from big pile and strong box. That money all look new. Yes. After Marshal arrest Dodge, Stone make plenty lynch talk. Everyone getting plenty worked up when me leave town. Marshal Ames can't stand off a mob. The jail's too weak. Ah. Oh. And what we do? We've got to get Dodge out. Get him out of sight. Let me fill up. One fill there. Let's count. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto soon reached the mob-threatened jail where Tom Dodge was held as a suspected bank robber and killer. They scouted around the log-walled building on foot and found that Marshal Ames and his deputy, Todd Stanton, were busy stringing a barbed wire barricade between the porch posts. Excitement had inflamed the men who packed the Ace High Cafe, biggest of Modoc City's gambling and drinking establishments. All talk centered on the bank robbery and plans to lynch the man in jail. One more round for the house, barkeep. Then we'll go and stretch that killer's neck. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had withdrawn to the rear of the jail building where their horses stood. There they found the cell window. The masked man tossed a pebble through the bars. Tom. Tom Dodge. Who's there? Your friend, the masked man. There's a mob gathering. Can you squeeze through the window if I pull out one of the bars? I can make it. Where are your tools? All right, Larry, this is all I'll need. Make the loop fast to a bar. I'll take a hitch on my saddle horn. But I got it. Now, Tonto, you slip across the street and start shooting. Make the officers think they're under fire. We'll meet later behind the Henry house. Me, Sally. Me burn plenty of powder. I got the rope tied, mister. Can your horse do it? Yes, he can do it. Steady, Silver. Get ready, Tom. Black Silver. Back. Back, boy. Keep pulling. The bar's given. Back, big sword. It's out. I'm coming to group. There's somebody out back. Get him, Todd. I'm coming, Marco. Quick, Tom. Get on that pinto. Right, Steady, big fella. Now, follow me. Run, Silver. Stop, you man. Stop the round, shoot. Determined to prevent a lynching, Ma Hank faced the mob in the Ace High Cafe with a scattergun. Some fell back, while still others took a stand with the big landlady of the Henry House, their hands on their six guns. Stay back, you fellas, or I'll let you have it. There won't be any lynching tonight. I'm with you, Ma. Here comes Marshal Ames. Hold it, Ma. Hold it, everybody. What's happened, Marshal? Tell these hooligans who want to hang Dodge, they'll have to catch him first. What do you mean? Dodge just broke jail. The masked man helped him. Where did they go? Well, they had horses. So I reckon they headed for the hills. This was your fault, Ma Hank. With that killer loose, nobody is safe. I'll take the blame, Mark Stone. Boys, I'm offering a reward for Tom Dodge. Two thousand dollars, dead or alive. What are we waiting for? Come on, let's ride. Ma Hank returned to her hotel a little later. She found the Lone Ranger waiting at the stables with Tonto and Tom Dodge. Say, I thought you fellas had made a getaway. I hope that's what everyone thinks. Almost everyone in town is out in the mountains hunting you. Oh, uh, what about Marshal Ames? Him and his deputy refused to ride with the mob. They knew they couldn't control it. Is March still with a posse? No, he must be in the hotel right now. The lamp was just lit in his room up there. Yes, I see it. Stone has offered a $2,000 reward for Tom. For me? Boy, that sidewinder. He's bound to get me strung up. $2,000 is a lot of money. I don't quite savvy his play, knowing he never cared much about Finch. He may be trying to make sure his own crime is never uncovered. With Tom dead, the case would be closed. Mm. So you suspect Stone of pulling the job himself. I ought to have been smart enough to think of him. Why do you say that, Mrs. Henry? Mister, he's as cold-blooded as a mackerel that's been frozen up in an iceberg at the North Pole. Hard to understand why a banker who is able to embezzle funds would turn hold-up man and kill his cashier. Stone has lost thousands of dollars playing poker the last few months. He uses his room for his games, so I know. We'll never be able to clear Tom or convict Stone unless we tie him to the stolen money. Mm. If that dinero can be identified, why don't you grab Stone and force him to dig it up? As things stand now, I'll have to get him to produce some money from his own person in the presence of good witnesses. Yes, that's so. People all figure you're Tom's partner. Kimasabi, hmm? if Stonefeller take money, him not take it far. 
him show up in front of bank too soon. I have a plan. Can I help? Yes, Mrs. Henry. You can see to it that the marshal and his deputy are at the jail for the next hour or so. And what Tom and me do? Wait here for me. I'll have to act fast. <laughs> A few minutes later, the masked man stood outside the door of Mark Stone's room. Sounds which came from within told him that the banker was still up. He knocked. What's the matter out there? I've got word for you, Stone. What about? Tom Dodge. Open up. You're wearing a mask. You helped Dodge break jail. That's right. Stand still. What do you want of me? I wasn't trying to lynch Dodge. You... Offered a reward. Yes, but listen... I want that reward money. The law can have Tom Dodge. Are you offering to surrender your own partner? I've got him. All you have to do is pay. I think I see what's behind your double cross. Think what you please. You got Dodge out of jail figuring that he'd split the bank's money with you. He didn't come through, so you want the reward for your trouble. I don't blame you. Are you ready to put up the money? I'd be worse than a fool to let you have it before you turn Dodge in. I don't expect that. You post the money with Marshal Ames. I'll handle the rest of the deal. That'll be all right with me. You'll have to get the money to him in a hurry. I can't wait around Modoc City much longer. I don't carry that kind of dinero, but I can raise it within an hour. That's good enough. Ma Hank occupied the sturdiest chair in the jail office, holding her scatter gun on her knees, while Marshal Ames and Deputy Stanton tried to decide what her presence meant. Well, I, you didn't come here just to be sociable. What's up? Well, Marshal, I don't rightly know, but I hear somebody out in front right now. Yeah. Uh, it's Mark Stone. Howdy, Mark. Howdy, folks. Thought I'd bring in the money I'm offering for a reward. You uh, want me to pay it over to anyone who delivers Dodge here? That's the usual procedure. Here's the $2,000. Say, Mark, how'd you get that much dinero together now that the bank has been cleaned out? It's poker money, Ma. I've always kept a cash reserve on hand. Yeah, now I'll take charge of it, Ma. Steady, all of you. Keep your hands inside. Wait, it's the mask man. Came out of the cell. He's got your man Dodge with him. Yes, and there's that Indian who was in the bank. What do you fellas want? What were you doing in the cell? We came in the way Tom Dodge got out through the window. We've been waiting for Stone. Marshal, I made a deal with this masked man to surrender Dodge. That deal doesn't go with me. He helped Dodge get out. Even if he is willing to pull a double cross now, he reaches an outlaw. Disarm them, Toto. Oh, hey, you... Mrs. Henry, watch that front door. I'm watching it, Mass hey. Man. Oh, Hank. Are you in cahoots with these fellas? We're all working for the same thing, Marshal. Justice. He got guns, Kimasabi. Good. Now, Marshal Ames, take a look at that reward money Stone gave you. Hey. It's all freshly printed there, see? That money was in the bank a few minutes before the robbery. He's lying, Marshal. It's a trick to save Dodge's neck. Somebody's lying. Now examine the bank notes I'm handing you. Notice the serial numbers. Hey, they're pretty close to the numbers on these other green bags. Those notes came out of a big pile in the bank's strong box. They were passed to my Indian friend for change by the cashier. Finch did that? Why... What were you going to say, Mart? Uh, nothing, Marshal. You practiced law before you got to be a Marshal. You know a court wouldn't listen to these killers. Otto, tell the Marshal what happened a little while ago. Well, me call a stone. Him go behind bank, take something from under board steps, and then come here. What did he take? Well, me not see. It too dark. But me go look under steps after him leave. And me find plenty paper money hid there. The Indian lies. I didn't take any money from under the steps. If there's any money there, these owls put it there to incriminate me. Stone, the money beneath those steps bears your bank's name and your own signature. The bank department and the Wells Fargo Company will have the numbers of the bills. And their records will show when you receive the money. But I... You told us the reward money came from your cash reserve. You'll find that the bills beneath the steps are numbered in sequence with that reward money. Uh, God, it's stone. The masked man's got you dead to rights. His word and the word of an Indian against mine. It's more than that, you crook. It's a darn sight more than that. Tonto's not the only one that saw stone dip into that cash beneath the steps. 
Stone, I saw you too, and you hadn't better call me a liar. Uh, I guess you've got me. If it hadn't been for that mask man, I... you killed one man. And almost got another lynched. Now, what's behind it? Uh, you might as well know. I embezzled bank funds. Finch found out about it. I got him to go in with me on a fake hold-up that would cover the shortage and give some cash besides. I suppose you killed Finch to shut his mouth. I'm glad I drilled him. If the fool hadn't passed out these new bills, this masked man wouldn't have had anything to go on. Dodge, I... I'm sorry I arrested you. And if getting your job will help square things, I can do that. That's all I want, Marshal. You'd better get Stone out of town before the mob comes back. You're not taking me anywhere. Look out for Stone. He's got a Derringer sleeve gun. Drop your shotgun, woman. Now stay in front of me while I back out of here. My arm. He broke my arm. Hold it, Mrs. Henry. I've got him. Stand still, you buzzard, or I'll break your other wing. Oh, my arm. Masked man, that's what I call real shooting. When you can plug a skinny squirt like Stone who's hiding behind a walking mountain like me. Otto. Give the officers their guns. Ah, make it mad. I'll Thank fix you. up Stone's arm while you fellas get ready to hide him somewhere. They say trained you pretty soon. We'll take him to Denver. Hey, the masked man and the Indian are gone. Say, say more, Hank. Who is that masked man? Don't you know now, Marshal? He saved your life once. When the Dobie Anderson gang shot you up in the Badlands and left you for dead. But then he's the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. 